Hello again. Human intelligence is inextricably bound up with the identification of patterns. Science is based upon seeing patterns, whether among the elements, in the physiology of the animal kingdom, or when looking outward into space. This talent or ability is also of vital importance in our day-to-day -day life, allowing us to split dangers and understand what is going on around us. Indeed, the identification of patterns is very probably the origin of our intelligence and our ability for abstract thought. Early humans learned that dark clouds meant that it would probably rain soon, that rustling in long grass might indicate the presence of a dangerous predator, or that some berries were tasty and nutritious while others could be deadly. Those who were sharpest at identifying such patterns were the most likely to survive and pass on their genes to offspring, and so pattern recognition may be thought of as a useful trait from an evolutionary viewpoint. Of course, sometimes we see patterns which are not really there. For instance, four or five thousand years ago, People in the Middle East thought that they could see patterns in the random distribution of stars in the night sky. This is how we ended up with the constellations with which we are all familiar. The idea that the three stars in the winter sky, which are in a straight line, are the belt of Orion, that mighty hunter. Or that another cluster resembles a lion or a scorpion. Also, other patterns besides those which are purely visual, and spotting these two can play a part in our survival. Here's an example. Whenever a man assures me that he is telling the truth and swears an oath on his children's lives or his eyes or makes some other extravagant vow of this kind, I recognize a pattern in that every single person I have ever known to make declarations of this kind has been a liar, hoping to persuade me to believe something which is false, usually for a purpose which will work to my disadvantage. Here is an example of pattern recognition which protects me from being swindled or tricked out of my money. I dare say that most viewers will be readily able to come up with similar cases of their own, where spotting patterns has proved to be inestimable value to them in their lives. Here is a pattern which is very much like the ability to recognize a rustling of movement in long grass as signaling the possible approach of a hidden predator. If I'm walking along a lonely dark street in London, then two or more people are loitering ahead of me, waiting for me to reach them. This sets all my alarm bells ringing. These, too, may be predators. However, this possibility changes according to age, gender, ethnicity, and culture. If I see three old women hanging around ahead of me, that does not signify. If I see three Sikhs wearing turbans, Again, that is most likely to be as safe as can be. Three Chinese men in London? No problem. Young white men? It depends on their appearance. Two types of loiterers, though, will cause me to take evasive or defensive action. And these are black youths and those who look to me as though they are Middle Eastern Muslims or South Asian Muslims. Of course, these might be as harmless as three old women returning from bingo, but I will definitely be more on my guard. This does not, of course, mean that three black youths ahead of me in a lonely street are certainly going to be muggers. They might equally well be Caribbeans returning home from an evening at a Pentecostal church. Some responses to patterns are false positives. You get that with rustling grass on the savannah as well, of course. It might not be a leopard creeping up, ready to pounce, but instead the wind making the long grass sway. 
But you see, reacting as though it might be a leopard is always a wise move. You haven't lost anything. I know that being mugged in the street by a white person is very unlikely. And I know, too, that being attacked by Sikhs or Chinese people would be a very rare occurrence. However, being attacked by a group of Afghans or Muslim Arabs is certainly a possibility. And the chances of this happening when young black men are involved increase. This is a pattern which can be easily spotted from reading newspapers or watching the television news. Attacks on people passing peacefully along the street are sometimes carried out by Middle Eastern or South Asian Muslims and at other times by people of African or Caribbean heritage. The number of such attacks by white people, Chinese, Hindus, Sikhs or Jews is negligible. This is another example of pattern recognition, one though which is seldom talked about or even mentioned out loud, the fears of accusations of racism.